All right, so I'm joined by Laura and DJ from Krungbin. Thank you guys so much for speaking to me today. So I know Mark's, I guess, feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, but you guys have been touring like crazy recently. I know you spent the past two weekends playing at one of the biggest music festivals in the world. Uh, what was playing at Coachella like? It was awesome. Um, I'm really high off the show last night. Um, the second weekend's a little bit more chilled than the first. Um, not only in the festival, but also like as a performer, because you're really nervous about playing the first one. Um, so I think it felt like we just got to have fun on stage last night with everyone, and it went really well. Uh, for me, yeah, it was a it was an interesting experience. Uh, it was a festival that I've heard about for a long time, and uh, honestly, never thought I'd get an opportunity to to participate in it. So. Uh, showing up last week and seeing all of the, you know, the incredible artists there it was, it was an amazing thing, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, anytime you walk into a situation like that, it's a lot of pressure, uh, performance pressure, to you know go out and make an impression and and do well. Um, so you know, in a good way though, it just makes you step your game up a little bit. But I think we handled it well and we had fun. Had a few snafus here and there, but you know we figured it out and we got through it. Yeah. Did you guys meet any artists there that you guys were fans of? Well, I don't. I didn't really have time. Like when we got there the first week, uh, we were kind of mostly just doing stuff like this, like interviews and press, and uh, and then the second week was kind of more of the same. Uh, did you talk to anyone? I met um, I met Blood Orange and Anderson Pack, but I didn't meet them at the festival. It's like this weird thing where everyone's just sort of in L.A. and around Coachella. So I actually met them both in L.A., but it was because of the festival. So yeah. it sort of feels like. So I, I heard Anderson Pock is a, a fan of your guys' music. Have you been surprised by, it doesn't have to have been at Coachella, but have you been surprised by any artists that have reached out to you guys and, and told you they're fans of your music? I mean, I think every time it's a, it's a real... Uh, honor. I mean, today we're playing with Trey Anastasio, and we just met him, and um, he's such a dude. Uh, but for him to say, you know, I listen to you guys all the time, it's it's crazy to think that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. So I know. Yeah, do you have a comment? Um, it. I think anytime we find out that anyone's checking out our material, it's it's humbling. Um, it's always surprising because, I mean, just the three of us, we never thought that anything that we were doing would make it to this point. We, we were honestly just three friends, just hanging out every week. Um, we decided to start a band and recorded some material and people like it. It's kind of weird. So, yeah. So I guess kind of following up on that, I know you guys have been touring like crazy, but have you spent any time sort of reflecting on on this rise to notoriety? It really seems like the past year you, you've blown up. So what has that felt like? Yeah, I, I have, um, I definitely have them on the last show date of every run. Um, I'll cry in the middle of the show. <laughs> I do, I'll look back and DJ will be like, there she goes. Um, because it'll hit me usually on the last show because I'm sort of trying to emotionally probably soak it all in of what just happened but you know we played Australia and Japan and Korea and Indonesia and then had a week off and then played Mexico and Colombia and I mean I, I, I was talking to DJ about it backstage about how emotional I was because it was like god we played all of these countries that we never thought we'd play or maybe see and all of these people turned up for Krungden and knew all the na na na's and that is magic, you know. And I think that's also like a testament to the music you're making. It's there's not a lot of vocals, right? So anyone with with any that speaks any language can connect to the music. Yeah. So that's it's pretty amazing that you can do the international touring totally. because of that. Um, yeah, I think it's a big part of it because everybody can everybody knows the sound na. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought they were laws. 
<laughs> when I listened and you know I think I don't know how many shows I went on singing la 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 and then Laura was like I'm saying nah are you saying la and I'm like well I was I guess we're saying nah now uh, but yeah it's I think that's the coolest thing about um, what we've been able to accomplish so far is that um, the lack of vocals kind of erases the language barrier that would normally be present in music that's only in English, you know. Um, and I think that helps that, especially Mark, I wish he were here to talk about it, but um, ever since I've met him, he's been listening to music that's not in English. So um, it, when you do that, it really focuses, it makes you focus on the, mel the melody and the melodic content more than what they're actually saying. It's like, how does it make you feel? And a lot of times, um, the singers in particular are, are able to translate, you know, they're able to emote the feelings of what they're saying, even though you may not know what they're saying because they're not speaking a language that you know. Um, but there have been times that we've listened to a song, you know, on repeat and looked at each other like, oh, it feels like she's saying this. And then you go and you translate it and she's actually saying that. Yeah, yeah in, in a weird way. Yeah, That's cool. it's really cool. So um, throughout your guys' time touring and as a band, are there any particular shows or maybe moments on tour that really like stick out to you? Just like interesting stories. I was thinking, I think because I was at Coachella, I was sort of reflecting on all of the festivals specifically that we've played. Um, and they're, they're kind of the best and the worst sometimes as a performer because you don't get a sound check all the time. And a lot of it is you're just kind of hoping for the best um, on certain things. But that's also sometimes what creates the magic when the magic happens. Um, so yeah, I was thinking about festival sets that have been of note, and we played Seoul Jazz Fest last year in Seoul. It was the first time we'd ever been to Korea, and we played an amphitheater not dissimilar to this one, and there were, um, I don't know how many thousand lovely uh, Korean folks that were doing the dance from Evan Finds a Third Room, just standing in the sunshine doing it. Um, that's like, I don't know, there's no feeling like that. Yeah. So I guess a final question, what can we expect from Krongbin for the rest of the year? <laughs> lots and lots of shows. <laughs> um, our calendar is pretty full. Um, I think we get a break sometime in the fall just to do some administrative things. Um, but for the most part, yeah, playing a lot of festivals. Um, I mean, we're hitting the road pretty hard. Um, it, just keeping it going, uh, giving the people what they want, I guess. Any any new music on the horizon? Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for, thank for speaking, you. And speaking to me, and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks thank for you. taking the time. I watched yeah. the thing you made. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it was it was really impressive. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate you managed to find any information that we had <laughs> and you made a sort of mini mention. I'm trying to add a little more with this. <laughs> yeah. cool. right. Thank you Thank so you much.